What a journey this has been. This week we started with consonants, then we looked at vowels, then we were looking at stress. And now we're going to go a little bit more global and we're going to look at prosody, which is um, the component of your speech which makes pitch go up or down and which makes it so that you don't sound like a robot. So what do robots sound like? They probably sound something like this, or at least very old timey robots. So an intonation from like an old sci-fi robot is very flat, speaking like this without any change in pitch. That is not what human languages are like. In human languages, pitch goes up and down and this marks, for example, the boundaries of sentences or attitude towards a sentence. We call all of these changes in pitch prosody. For example, here's uh, examples of how pitch goes up and down in English sentences like he bought apples, peaches, pears, and oranges. Or I saw Esther, Jane, Neil, and Susan. Imagine if we change that rise and fall for something like just the rice. It would sound like it's an incomplete list. Like I saw Esther, Jane, Neil, and Susan. It sounds different. Uh, all these changes are called prosody. I uh, do want you to look at what the phonetics of prosody are. They're essentially changes in the vibration of your vocal cords. So your vocal cords vibrate a number of times per second. This is called the fundamental frequency at which they're vibrating. Maybe it's 100 times per second, 200 times per second. And like a musical instrument, if the string is very loose, it's going to vibrate lower and it's going to be it's going to have a lower pitch. If the uh, string is very tight, then it's going to vibrate, vibrate faster and it's going to give you a higher pitch. So if the chord is very loose, lower pitch, slower vibration. If it's very tight, higher pitch, faster vibration. This is exactly what your vocal cords are doing. Let me show you. I do not need you to learn the, the names of the bones involved, but I do want you to understand that pitch uh, is changing because the configuration of your vocal cords is changing. I want you to look at what that looks like in real vocal cords. And what I want you to see is over here, how uh, a very tight uh, cord will then be become loose and that will bring the pitch from high to low. So as you can see, if a vocal cord is uh, tighter, it'll vibrate faster and give you higher pitch. If it's looser, it'll vibrate slower and give you lower pitch. So how do we use this in language? Every language has its, uh, its own set of pitches that it uses for prosody. For example, in English, let's focus on this stressed syllable, the rich in Richardson. It can have all of these different pitches. For example, the first one, a fall, means that it's just a statement. It was read tonight by Janet Richardson. If you give that syllable a rising pitch, it means that it's like an incomplete statement. So it was read tonight by Janet Richardson. Read tonight by Janet Richardson. Sounds like there's something else coming up. If it's level, it sounds like you are just un uninterested. It was read tonight by Janet Richardson. If you make that syllable fall and then rise, it sounds like you're partially agreeing. 
was retinated by Janet Richardson. Richardson. And if you raise fall, it sounds like an emphatic uh, agreement. It was retinated by Janet Richardson. It was retinated by Janet Richardson. It sounds like you're st uh, more strongly agreeing. Richardson. Um, every language has its set its set of uh, pitches that it uses for one kind of statement or the other. These are examples of statements in Korean. For the sentence, "Gracias," uh, is that so? So as you can see, just a rising pitch means that it's a yes or no question. 그랬어요? 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 On the other hand, if you drag the lower pitch for a little bit longer and then go up, it'll sound like you have disbelief in when you're asking the question. 그랬어요? 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 Let me compare them. 그랬어요? 그랬어요? Mm -hmm. It's lower for a little bit longer and then it goes up. If it goes up and then down, it sounds like you're giving the news. 그랬어요? 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 And if it goes, if it's low for longer and then a sudden rise and a fall, it sounds like you're irritated. 그랬어요. 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 Can you play all four? 그랬어요. 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 So they're different from English and each of them has its own function. 그랬어요. 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 Thank you. Um, so we use prosody to indicate like our emotions towards the sentence or our attitude towards the sentence. In addition to this, in English, we also use prosody to mark the focus of a sentence. For example, all of these have the same words, the same sounds and everything, but the prosody is slightly different so that one word is more salient. And these are answers to different questions. Who uses penicillin? Doctors use penicillin. What do doctors do with penicillin? Doctors use penicillin. What do doctors use? Doctors use penicillin. So, doctors use, doctors use, doctors use penicillin are uh, same words but different prosody. Mm -hmm. This is one thing that IPA doesn't have. IPA does not really have a way to mark the prosody of sentences. There are other systems. Uh, the one that Korean uses, as you can see, with these H's and L's is called Toby. We're not going to study it in this class, but what I, what I do want you to know is that prosody exists. <laughs> prosody is a way that uh, in which we represent both our stance towards the sentence, and in many languages we use prosody to mark the focus of a sentence. And prosody is pitch. Pitch is produced by changing the frequency of the vibration of your vocal cords. And English uses prosody to, as you saw, stance of sentence and focus. And in the next video, we're going to be looking at linguistic tone, which also makes use of pitch in, in a, uh, so that it changes the meanings of words.